let us try to understand why do we need to have a session on speaking skills by far until date the most amount of communication that human beings make is via speaking and it is also important to point out that the majority of informal as well as formal communication is still speaking so whether it be a friendly gossip with your bosom friend or a out and out formal setting of an interview speaking skills play a very very important role and hence we need to understand that speaking emerges as a very very important activity in our lives because it is only through speaking that men originally started to communicate with each other now so let us try to understand what do we mean by speaking skill we can say that speaking is a art of communication and it can be considered as a productive skill by a productive skill what i mean is a skill that can be inculcated and developed with the efforts of the speaker good speaking skill is the act of generating new words that can be understood by listeners so a good speaker is one who is very clear and always informative now when i say good speaking skills is the act of generating words it means it involves a conversation which has the adequate amount of words that is necessary for understanding or comprehension by the listener most of the times when we communicate we tend to fumble for words or grope for meanings of translated words in the language in which we are speaking that happens because we suffer from lack of certain things so we need to first try to understand what is the objective behind having a good speaking skill well the three important objectives are number 1 gives us the ability to communicate effectively so the main purpose of speaking skills is to enable us to emerge as better communicators for future and it also enables us it also gives us the right the power to convey the message in a thoughtful and convincing manner now this is very important because most of the times when we communicate at an organizational level it is very important for us to make our messages thoughtful and convincing until and unless we have a convincing power in our speaking skills we will not be able to convince the interviewer that well i am the best candidate for your company right so convincing skills and thoughtfulness is very important while speaking and finally it ensures that the receiver or the listener has received what you targeted the person to receive and did not misunderstand the message so it actually means that a good speaker eliminates the different kinds of communication gaps and channel and semantic noise in the process of communication so we have understood the three important objectives of speaking skills now let us try to understand what are the different parts of developing speaking skills or what do we mean by speaking skills when we speak when we say that the person has a very good speaking skill what are the different characteristic features which we look into when we are trying to assess someone's speaking skill the four different features that we assess are listening writing reading and speaking 
but most importantly it comes out to be that while judging a person 70% importance is given to the way the person speaks 10% to the way the person listens 8% to the way the person writes and only 7% to the way the person reads so here we understand the importance of speaking skills in the life of any professional and the four different skills that together make speaking skills are fluency vocabulary grammar and pronunciation so in order to have a good speaking skill we need to have all these four characteristics within us fluency means the amount of smoothness or lucidity that we have while we are speaking to a person sometimes we keep fumbling for words and there are fog ons there are thinking gaps which we call all these things hamper the process of fluency sometimes when we cannot find the right word for a particular idea we lack the vocabulary while constructing a sentence if you are not constructing it according to the grammatical rules of the language then we are lacking the grammatical knowledge about the language and if we are not pronouncing the words the way they should be pronounced that might also lead towards the breaking of the communication and hindering our speaking skills so fluency vocabulary grammar and pronunciation all these four are very important for developing our speaking skills however in today's presentation we are going to speak about fluency and vocabulary only because grammar and pronunciation will take two different other presentations So let us first start with how can we develop our vocabulary or rather what do we mean by vocabulary at all the word vocabulary means that we are trying to enrich the words stock in our minds the more words that we can register in our minds the stronger is our vocabulary and in order to develop the vocabulary we need to start with a very very traditional way of keeping a personal dictionary because this is one of the most efficient ways till date to learn new vocabulary and to track our overall progress however this dictionary can definitely be a online dictionary that you can have as an app in your mobile phones or it can even be a handy pocket dictionary that you carry all the time and you need to also have a notebook or you can create a new memo in your phone where you can regularly update the list of new words so that you can look back to them in the time when you are free why is it important to look back to them is because we need to repeat repeat and repeat that is the way the human brain works is actually by utilizing the repetition patterns to strengthen the meaning and the usage of everything new that we learn so the more we repeat the newly learned words the more our brain will register the word in its cognitive mind and the more we'll get friendly to the understanding and remembering of this new word in our mind so while it is crucial that we constantly learn new vocabulary it is also very important that you revise each and every new word to make the most out of our learning experience so it is very very important for us to keep learning and keep repeating however these two are not the only ways of developing vocabulary we'll be moving towards the next two and they are trying to make the new word meaningful 
we all know that our brain understands new verbal concepts better when they are linked to an image or any concept. For example, if I'm trying to say serpentine, which means a zigzag way. So the word serpentine can be linked to the word serpent and that to the word snake to create the image of a zigzag figure in our mind so that it will be easier for us to memorize the word serpentine. Similarly, if we learn the word temperament, we may link it with the meaning to temperature so that it is easier for us to memorize. So in this way, every new vocabulary that we learn needs to be linked with a word so that it becomes a very meaningful word to remember. And definitely, reading, reading and reading is probably one of the very, very important ways of developing vocabulary. It really needs no explanation. Because reading in combination with a dictionary is probably, till date, one of the best ways to come across new words. And we may add to it that we should try to read as many different reading materials as possible. We should not restrict ourselves to only storybooks and newspapers. Rather, we should also widen the range of reading towards reading blogs, reading magazines, journals, and other different sources of offline and online materials which is at our access. As a new generation learner, we might even use apps for developing our vocabulary. This is probably one of the most new methods of developing vocabulary because for today's learner, we have different kinds of language learning apps like Duolingo, Memrise, and Quizapp, where the apps are very, very vocabulary centric and they utilize the reputation and behavioral patterns that helps us in learning and maximizing the time and effort that we give to learn vocabulary. So we can have these apps installed in our smartphones and by utilizing the apps, we can also try to develop our vocabulary. But then it's not only apps, but even games are certain very, very important ways of developing vocabulary. This is highly important because we do not need any extra motivation to learn here. Rather, learning here becomes very, very entertaining. And these edutainment methods of learning actually help us to learn in a very innovative manner. So we can play board games like Scrabbles and Crosswords that helps us to learn new vocabulary. And these games are now even available online so that you can even play them online at your own time and ease. Once we have realized what is the importance of developing vocabulary, we will move towards the next topic, that is, how can we keep developing vocabulary? And that is by only two different ways. The first of them is by actively using what we learn. That is, the true mastery shines when you are able to use a new vocabulary in a real life setting. Learning a lot of new words is definitely important. But utilizing those new words in our daily lingo is all the more important. So we need to engage in different kinds of conversations and try to include those new words wherever they are appropriate. And in order to do that, we need to always stay motivated. 
because we can improve on our vocabulary as much as we want. And the curiosity to cultivate new words every day can take us to the zenith of success. Because, you know, there is no limit to learning a language. The more we learn, the better we become. So just keep actively using the new words that we have learned and keep learning new words are probably the two most important bottom lines for developing vocabulary skills. But then, as I said, Vocabulary is just one of the four important parts of speaking skills. And then we are going to today focus on the next speaking skill, which is fluency. By fluency, as I have already said, we mean the fluency of thinking as well as speaking patterns. That is, while we speak, there should not be any staccato or any stop or any pause that hinders the process of communication. The smooth flowing words are more welcoming for a listener than when we speak with a lot of pauses. So fluency can be developed by the most important way is speaking, speaking and speaking. It is rightly said by a very famous critic that the best way to speak better is to speak. Because the more we speak, the better we become. So we need to commit ourselves to the practicing of speaking as much as possible and with as many people as possible. But when we speak, we also need to reflect on our conversations. After the conversation is over, we need to take a moment of time to reflect, to find out how did it go? How much do we think we have understood it? How much did the other person understand of what I said? How comfortable was I while trying to describe the subject matter? Did I come across any unknown words? So we actually need to try and find out and contemplate on these questions and try to make it better the next time when we communicate. Until and unless we find the faults, we'll never be able to rectify them. So it is very, very important for us to try and encounter these unknown questions where we can better ourselves. Followed by these two, we can also develop fluency by listening and reading more. We need words to talk, right? Class time is a great time for learning vocabulary. But that's not the only time. There are also other ways in which we can increase our vocabulary. Listening is one of the very, very important and subconscious ways of developing vocabulary. And if we watch movies, listen to music, to TED Talks, to podcasts, we will also be coming across new words and we will be developing a better vocabulary. Similarly, reading books, magazines, blogs, etc. are also helpful in developing vocabulary. When reading and listening, what happens is we actually find new and interesting expressions. And these expressions become the new material that we look up and that we use in our real life communications. Sometimes what happens, we feel very nervous about what am I supposed to speak. There comes in the very important role of preparing cheat sheets. Cheat sheets are small bits of paper where we just jot down the points on which we are going to speak about. 
so the people who are nervous about speaking and has a feeling of not knowing what to say can combat with that nervousness by preparing a cheat sheet for themselves Another important way of developing fluency is by understanding that we do not only need to pick up new words, we also need to pick up new phrases. If we know a variety of phrases, that will add a lot of more charm and glory to our conversation. For example, if I say it's raining very, very heavily, and if I say it's raining cats and dogs, raining cats and dogs is a phrase that add, adds charm to the kind of conversation that we are making. And it also makes the listener feel happy about the kind of conversation that is going on. But we need to be very, very careful as some of these expressions might be very un informal and might not be very ideal for using at all situations. There is another way which most of us dislike is recording our own voice and listening to it. But despite the fact that we dislike hearing to our recorded voice, it is actually one of the very, very beneficial ways of improving speaking. Because when we record our voice, we come across the exact lacuna and shortcomings that we face while we are communicating. So hearing ourselves makes us realize things that we might not realize otherwise. Hence, it is one of the very important ways of communicating and developing our fluency. Finally, let's move towards the next two and the last two important points of developing fluency. The first among them is utilizing the phone. Most of us have a feeling that when we communicate, we do not have a very comfortable communication while we are communicating over the phone. This is because when we communicate over the phone, we are actually having different kinds of questions in our mind because we cannot have a face-to-face -face communication. And because we cannot have a face-to-face -face communication, we feel that we are not being able to understand the nonverbal cues of the listener. So, in order to make ourselves more proficient in telephonic conversations, we need to start with short telephonic conversations, might be with friends and family, and then we can move towards a little more challenging calls like making appointments and inquiries. And finally, we can go towards difficult telephonic conversations like telephonic interviews. But last and not the least is having fun. It is always far easier to learn something new when we are having fun. And I have always said that learning humanities should always be in a fun way. So we need to inject a bit of silliness into our speaking practices. It can be like talking to ourselves alone or singing out loud all the popular English songs. It can even be by doing with tongue twisters. What is important is realizing the fact that how well you can understand, utilize, pronounce, and juggle from one word to the other that is 
in the English language. Well, here I have a tongue twister for you people. How much wood would a woodchuck chuck if a woodchuck would chuck wood? <laughs> well, that's a nice tongue twister. And I hope you have realized that developing vocabulary and fluency as two important factors of speaking skills is very, very important for each and every one of us who is willing to become an effective communicator. If there are any questions on any of the points, you can feel free to write to me or can call me up at my contact number. Excuse me, sir. Yes, Ati. Sir, I come to your class in late. So please mark me present, sir. Why did you come in late, Shati? Sir, due to network issue, my net is very slow. Okay, dear. I have not yet taken the attendance. Okay, sir. Okay. IT Simpi, are you there? Yes, sir. Okay. Fine. Well, let me take the attendance. Uh, roll number one.